it is Toby. I am back with a brand new thing. Uh, this is going to be a little podcast that I'm going to start doing. And, of course, you hear fucking rustling in the background because I have my professional <laughs> friends. Wait. And they're like, fucking get- Wait till you fucking introduce! No. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is this all about you, first of all? Because I had to, I had to fucking lead into it. I don't know. I don't like this. I was gonna, I was gonna build up to like the grand unveiling. I, I want it to. I don't like that. Hey assholes! Guess what? Dickhead Josh is here too. <laughs> you might remember from other, from other such things as people I fucking hate in my life or overanalyzed a TV show about Power Rangers. <laughs> this, this podcast so far. Started out very broad appeal, I feel like, in the first five seconds, and now we've we've really honed in on, <laughs> on the five people we're aiming for. <laughs> this is laser lined at about seven audience members right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Josh and I have been brainstorming for a while, and we decided to come back as a podcast where there's really no point to this. Like, Overanalyzed had some sort of focus on something. This is going to be fucking, like, all of our favorite podcast ideas smashed into, like, one other podcast. I feel like we should explain who we are more. Uh, okay. Can, wait, can let's, let's, let's pause. <laughs> let's pause on the episode real quick. We're dropping... No, no, this is all going live. This is going big. Okay, well, I mean, that's fine. But <laughs> we're going big on what over, on, like, overanalyzed and dropping overanalyzed. Like, that's a show no one can even go see anymore. <laughs> So, Josh and I are two people that know each other from the internet, Yeah, and we used to do a show together called Overanalyzed. That's good. That that was in the past. That's banned from YouTube about seven times over by now. Yeah. But what we used to do is make Mystery Science Theater 3000 type commentary over top of things, and think we were fucking hilarious. We were hilarious. Okay, you weren't hilarious, I was hilarious. Dick jokes all day. I used to scream and curse a lot, and then giggle for like 20 minutes, and that'd be an episode. Let's be clear, you still do that, it's just people don't hear it as often. That is true. Yeah. I do laugh all the time. So now, Josh and I, internet friend Josh over there. Toby and I. Josh, okay. We decided to do a podcast that the YouTube can't yell at us for. I mean, they will, but... They'll shut it down. Yeah. They're going to fucking ban us for a record-setting third time. That's fine. You know what? That, bring it. Bring it, YouTube. I don't know. I wanted to copyright infringe myself. I and think... I can like fucking go at them and be like, take this shit down! To me, EMCA! I, I'm pretty sure when you sign up, you, you sell them your soul. So I think they could... They could take you down at any point. If I if we if I signed up like five times now, can they like still take that? Yeah, I think they could take themselves down because they own you multiple times. So they're like infr- infringing on their own copyright. Think about it, man. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I th- I don't know if I said the name already, so we're gonna say it now. Josh and I brainstormed the two smartest minds in the internet. We we are we're, we, listen. If you want smart people on the on the internet, don't go to like Neil deGrasse Tyson or like Bill Nye. No, come to Toby and Josh. Yeah, and and then and, and then we'll point you in the right direction to get to Bill Nye. <laughs> You're gonna want to go on Google and then swing back around that <laughs> let, way. Let me Google that for you. This podcast is named what, Toby? Uh, this podcast is gonna be called Geek Pop. Geek Pop. Because... <laughs> go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry for taking that away from you. <laughs> No, I was listen, man. I was tagging up. I was, I was saying again. I was like, "What geek pop? Tell me more." What? Oh, uh, Josh, you know what? I will. Thank you. This is where we mash all the things we like together into one horrible idea. Tell me some of the like, things that you like. Okay, well, that like, might be we both like. We both like video games. We do. I feel like that's geeky. It is. I follow random assholes online, like pop culture, and see like, oh my god, Kanye West got married, and I tell you ridiculously stupid things about it, and that's like pop culture. Sure. So what we're going to do is make fun of everything, or tell or tell stories about each other and embarrass ourselves. And to steal another idea that we like, we're actually going to answer questions from here on out, Josh. Whoa, really? Yes, Josh. Toby, I See, have lots the, of questions. Will you answer my questions? I will answer your questions, too. Okay. But the trick is, Josh, yes. this is episode zero. Oh. And not just as episode zero, it's going to be issue zero, because we're going to steal things from comic books, too. So, so there's no, there's no uh, original art. So we are taking that mantra to the next level by not having any original ideas whatsoever. Yeah, we're just gonna ramble on like we do. Perfect. Make, hopefully, make a couple people laugh, and then just get fucking nuts with it. This is essentially the podcast version of when you were a kid and played with hot, hot played with Hot Wheels and just mashed them together, right? <laughs> you, you took two, took two Hot Wheels and just smashed them into each other, and that's what this podcast is. And then I made a uh, Cooper Mini out of it because it's like a baby car because the car is fucked. You mean a Mini And car. then... But go on. 
<laughs> Ombudsman Josh. <laughs> so Fact checking already. This is this is a very fact filled podcast, and I I couldn't let you in good conscience go on with thinking that that was the name of that car because it's not. I you know what? I appreciate that. Yeah, anytime. But but in, in summary, uh-huh. before I start telling ridiculous stories and you make fun of me, yes, this is like the warm up episode for us that we're not ready for, but we are. So it's going to be like a sneak peek of everything we're going to do in full f- episode form. And then hopefully next week we start doing this properly. So like what he's, what he's really saying here, people, is this is bad, so don't judge us for it yet. Wait till next week. Don't judge me for my bad times. Judge me for my good times or you can't have me in my bad times. Like this podcast five ever. Yeah. Okay. Cry if you like this every time. <laughs> and on with the show. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so... It's like every other good podcast, Josh. Yeah. There's like pe- there's like people talk, uh-huh. and then like news talk, uh-huh. and then questions talk. <laughs> so we're like the, the Today Show. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bust out a story for you. Okay. And we're just going to go from there. Let's do it. All right. So Josh, this week at home, I got home from work the one day, uh-huh. and my drop ceiling collapsed in the dining room. <laughs> so your drop ceiling dropped. Like that, that ceiling was up there. <laughs> And it was just waiting. It was like, I'm, I'm called a drop ceiling, man. I'm going to fuck this guy's day up one day. You just wait. And then, and finally, it, that ceiling built up the nerve, and it dropped. Like a bad dubstep song, it dropped and then dropped harder. And then I came <laughs> home to a fucking, like, tilted ceiling and lots of rage. <laughs> so what, what, like, what is the aftermath of this? Like, did, did it fall completely down? Like, what, uh, what's going on? Uh, it ripped halfway out of the hangers that were in the drywall that weren't supposed to be in drywall. It was supposed to be in studs. Is that I'll your fault? You know, no, this is like my fucking like sixty year old, seventy year old house's fault. Okay, but so in the process of ripping that down, I put a ceiling fan up, and in the process of that, I I've had a bag of uh, potatoes on top of my fridge uh-huh. for about two for about I'll say a month now. Okay, maybe two. Josh, I never do potatoes went bad. <laughs> well, they they grow things out of them. No, well, see, they, they these potatoes didn't grow things out of them. They like melted or turned into liquid. So when I was, like, moving things off the top of the fridge to remove the drop ceiling, I saw a huge brown and yellow puddle of, like, potato goo on top of my fridge. Mm-hmm. And it's probably one of the worst fucking smelling things in the world. I don't think those were potatoes. Like, you, someone someone hoodwinked you and sold you things that weren't actually potatoes. Toby, potatoes don't melt. I know... The, 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 the insides turn to liquid or slime or something. Because there was potato goo all over the top of that fridge. That's gross. You... you... <laughs> You live in a pigsty. That's where I'm going. Get the fuck out of here. It's like, it's like a thousand degrees in here. I turned my goddamn fan off so I can fucking talk to your stupid ass. And I was in here oh, in the background the whole time. I, to me, first of all, I think that uh, you shouldn't buy potatoes. That's your first problem. Listen. I didn't buy them. They were bought for me in the process of, in the, like, the thought process of you'll eat these at some point. Mm-hmm. And uh, spoilers, yeah. <laughs> they were never eaten and now they're the slime. See, here's, here's the thing about potatoes is you have to, like, do a lot of work to make them edible, right? So so buy them in the form that's already the way you like them. Buy just, like, mashed potatoes in, like, a microwavable container. That's what I do. Buy, oh, so buy, like, the fucking, like, powder mashed potatoes? Those are good. Well, that, like that's good, flakes, too. Yeah, yeah, Where you yeah. just, like, fucking, like, they melt down somehow into, like, real potato? Yeah, it's, it's probably giving you cancer, but it's really good while it's doing it. <laughs> Well, if yes, I guess if cancer is delicious, like those potatoes, I guess it might be okay. I've never had like pure distilled cancer, uh, you know, in a food form, but maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know either. People eat a lot of weird things. That is that is true. But so I guess the me melting potatoes on top of my fridge. That, that's a side remind, story. That 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 led to these side stories I thought of. Okay. I reflected upon other stupid things I've done in my house, Josh. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to lay them out for you now. Please. And you're going to tell me, scale 1 to 10, <laughs> if you would have made that same mistake and how stupid my mistake was. Oh, okay. This is good. All right. <laughs> so, once, I had an apartment. This doesn't really involve the house, but it was stupid of me. Uh-huh. I had a dishwasher in that apartment. If, if you see where these stories are going, I want you to try to cut me off and like, like guess ahead or whatever you <laughs> okay, want to will. Interject <laughs> as much as possible, I guess. This is really what I'm going for here. So, the one night I was about to do dishes, and I was like... Man, there's a lot of shit caked on this plate, and I put non like dishwasher detergent on the plate, like the the normal like dish soap. Okay. <laughs> I can and hear you, you laughing. Dishwasher. And I put yeah. in the dishwasher. So I was walking around the apartment for a little bit. And I walked out. And there's a fucking <laughs> huge puddle of just bubbles and suds all over the entire <laughs> floor. And then I was like, Oh, I guess you can't do this. <laughs> 
So then I threw a bunch of towels and I tried to clean it up. And then uh, I guess the lesson I didn't learn right away uh-huh. was you can't just like get the uh, the dish soap out of the dishwasher. I had to keep running it to let like the cycle go through and burn out all like the soap. Oh, it's like a like a loofah where it just like you think you get it all out, but it's still in there. Yeah, yeah you squeeze it one more time, the extra extra soap comes yeah. out. Yeah. So I had to run it for like fifteen minutes to get all the soap to come out. So to sit there and keep cleaning up soapy suds that kept like overflowing in my apartment. Uh huh. And my landlord already hated me for other things like setting off the fire alarm too many times. <laughs> so this just adds like a, the uh, security deposit. I was never gonna get back. Toby, I'm going to give you a pass on this one because I literally learned just now when you said it that you can't put regular dish soap in the, the dishwasher. I didn't know, I didn't know <laughs> that you couldn't do that. That's um, awesome. Now uh, now we're teaching, Josh, already. This is a educational podcast. It really is. So here's the thing about me and my dishwasher. Uh, I'm terrified to use it. Uh, I, I wash everything by hand because I'm, I'm terrified of that exact scenario that you just described happening. Uh, like some sort of watery, soapy overflow of, like, what the fuck just happened here kind of thing? Yeah, because it's this machine that, like, superheats water and then sprays it around in a tiny little box. Like, that seems so dangerous. Like, I <laughs> I don't – listen, I don't feel like I have control over that mechanism that's happening inside of there. Uh, so I, I like just some nice, cool dishwashing. You know, I can put headphones on. I can knock it out in ten minutes or so and we're done. You know, it's easier. Just zone out. Man up. Yeah, I man up and You're I going get back to this, you you go back to the seventies like I do, and we just walk and wash with wash dishes by hand. Exactly, because you know what, dishwashers they're scary. They are, yeah. But along with dishwashing, yes, Josh, they also had a clothes dryer in my apartment. That goes hand in hand with dish with uh, clothes washing. But the important part of this was I was there for about two years before the story takes place. Okay, so I'm in my apartment. I have a new roommate coming in. And he's asking me some questions, and I was like, yeah, there's a washer and dryer for the clothes. You're obviously more than welcome to use it. But for whatever reason, the dryer sucks. and never fucking dries. I think I have to run the clothes through like five times, wrinkles all the time, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, yeah. He's like, did you ever clean out the lint trap? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I would like to go ahead and buzz in and say that you didn't <laughs> empty the lint trap. <laughs> well, like, so I've done laundry before. Like, I did it at my landlord with my parents and shit like that. Yeah. So I know there's lint traps. And they're usually these big fucking handles in the front of the thing you pull out to get the lint out. Yep, yep, yep. So in my wise, wise words, I look at him dead in the eyes, straight face, and I said, there's no lint trap on this one. <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 seriously, like, there is no lint trap on this thing. Like, I don't know where it is. There's no lint trap. I don't know why it's living this. You're all cocky so he looks about r- it. There's no big handle, please. <laughs> There's no fucking handle to pull out, you asshole. <laughs> but he looks at it for, like, 30 seconds. He goes, it's right here, and pulls it out. And Josh, like, you know how you can count the rings of a tree like, <laughs> for, the, for the years? Yeah. Those actually, like, rings or like, it was layers instead of rings, but, like, actual physical layers of, like, all blue fuzz and all black fuzz. There's, like, eight or nine layers of actual lint on my lint trap. It was, like, all the people who had lived there. <laughs> probably all the people who lived there before. Yeah. Two years of me using it along with a roommate. And I'm, that's, again, probably whether the uh, landlord hated me. But I am surprised I never set the place on fire with that. That's that's entirely true. So I had a similar story actually. So you know, you know, like growing up, the the the, the dryer like had the big pull out thing. It was like the length of my arm, right? Like I was I was versed in the lint trap because that was always my job. It's clearing out the lint, right? That's all your parents trust you to do. That's that's basically the only part of the process that I was allowed to do, <laughs> uh, because you know, you know, like I might uh, you know do something else that is dangerous. I might I might destroy clothing, but that that part that's pretty safe. Um, but yeah, when I moved into uh, my apartment I'm in right now, it has those like compact dryer combo thing, right? Well, that's what mine was too. It was like one of those little stand up. It was like eight foot tall, but like a foot wide kind of yes, thing. Yes, yeah. So like that, that sort of a deal. But I, sorry, I hunted for like weeks trying to figure out where the freaking lit trap was. Turns out it's inside the dryer and you like put your fingers through these holes and pull and like this panel comes out. It's really weird. Uh, but yeah, same way. I, I knew that there should be one. I was, so I wasn't quite as bad as you, but I didn't know where it was. Well, I knew there should be one too. I just didn't realize where it was. And when I couldn't find it the first time, I didn't like do extra exploratory surgery in the dryer. I was just like, okay, there's not a fucking lint trap. I'm done with this. Yeah. See, Let's throw some clothes in here. But, but you didn't know that there should be one because your, your final summation was, well, guess it doesn't have one. And you just, I mean, yeah, that's how, that's how I run life, man. You, you try for like 15, 20 minutes. You just give up. There's no... I I bet you make all the girls happy then. <laughs> well, guess it's not well, here. <laughs> you must not have tried, one. <laughs> if I tried for 15, 20 minutes, that should be enough. 
<laughs> you want an, you want a gold star and A for effort. That's what you want. Pound uh, the head, like listen, gold baby, star mine's effort. obvious. <laughs> you want to find my lit trap? <laughs> I'll point it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Because the cause, cause the term lint trap and the comparisons it's going to is just fucking disgusting. Well, like, oddly appropriate, though, if you think about it. I guess it. so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, see? I'm a, I'm a Mozart when it comes to analogies and metaphors. Yeah. I mean, musician, smart guy, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm a I'm an Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> just in general. Uh, of course. Uh-huh. But, uh... So what what else dumb stuff have you done? I do dumb stuff all the time. We'll I mean, see. like if you wanna, if you want to throw me a topic, I'll fucking throw something out there. But what, was that was that the last of the household disasters that you've? you've those read? are like th- those are actual disasters. Like one time, I almost killed myself by like grabbing a live outlet by like the sides and like closing the circuit on my fingers. So did you not know that that was going to happen, or was it just like a spur of the moment? Like didn't even think, like just grab the box. I mean. As you've known from like other things in my life, I don't really think about anything. Sure. It's all spur of the moment. Let's go. <clears throat> but because the house was older, like some of the outlets were upside down yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. So the one day I was sitting here and I was like, I'm going to fix this outlet. And I didn't turn the power <laughs> off. I just put my fingers on the sides of the outlet, on the actual outlet. Like the plate was off. Yeah. So I just put my fingers on the side of the outlet and my arm went numb. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, hmm. And my girlfriend at the time was a nurse and she was living here. And she's like, she gave me a look like, are you okay? And I was like, no, my arm, no, my arm's limit hurts really bad. And then she just yelled at me for being a fucking idiot. She wasn't very supportive in my time of need. I was just an asshole at the time. And then was there any point leading up to being electrocuted that you thought like, eh, maybe this isn't the safest thing in the world. Did that ever cross your mind? I'm pretty sure I went full force into, I'm going to grab this sock and turn it upside down. It was just like a like a one fell swoop sort of thing. Like you made the decision, and then in the in the instant you made that decision, you grabbed it. Yeah, I mean, there was literally no thought process other than I need to fix this. I'm going to fix this. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when when I was growing up, we had an ice maker uh, in our in our fridge that when you would reach up there and like grab ice, if you touch the metal part, it would electrocute you, <laughs> which is is not a good feature to have in an ice maker, especially for like a little kid who can't really see what he's reaching up and touching. Why would you put your hand up in the ice maker? To get, to get ice out of it? But that's what the button's for. No, no, no. This is like, this is pre when refrigerators had the nice, like, thing in the door. This is, it, like, an ice maker made ice into, like, a bowl, and you had to reach up in the bowl and grab it. I, I wish this was a visual medium, because I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. So, it, like, <laughs> all, all you know of, of fridges are the ones that have the ice in the door? Really? I know of ones that have ice in the door. I know of making a tray of ice and breaking it into something. Okay, well, this is like a weird mid-step, which is actually what I have sort of now without the ice maker. But anyway, this, yeah, this is like this weird like half-step where you don't have to like make the trays and break it. It does that automatically, but it doesn't come out the door. It just still falls into like a bucket, and you have to like reach in the bucket. I think my fridge or my freezer actually has that, but it's not hooked <laughs> up to anything. Yeah. Because like, there's this weird little tray that floats back there. Oh, just, yeah, just, it has uh, to like, be hooked up to water. You have to have that going. I turned that off a long time ago. <laughs> it's too much trouble. It co- Listen, water costs money. I can either pay for my internet or I can pay for the water. <laughs> so no ice in this house. <laughs> <laughs> you should make ice because then you can put it on your face when you don't have air conditioning. <laughs> it's great. Fuck you. It's got, fuck you. It's hot as shit. <laughs> I've solved all your problems. That's, that's good. Josh, ready for this, though? Here yes. it comes. Transition of the century. Let's hear it. I think it's called a segue, but go on. Seg of the Sench. Uh-huh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Speaking of wasting money on things and not using money on things, Josh, today, well, t- first of all, this today is Friday, but this is recorded Thursday. Today is the first day of the Steam sale, Josh. It is. Yeah, you were very excited about it. Yeah, that. so you get money ready. Oh, it is. Your fucking fake enthusiasm for what I've been looking forward to all day and nagging you about all day at work. So I mean, my enthusiasm is, is real. Yours is just, for some reason, astronomical. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, like, well, Josh always makes fun of me. I have a weird obsession with the trading cards on Steam. <laughs> you do, and, yeah. And, like, obsession is probably a weak word compared to what it actually is. 
But, like, I'm watching that shit like the fucking stock market. Yeah. I'm selling cards when they're high and buying low, and I have fucking spreadsheets and charts and all sorts of shit going on. So I want to be clear to the people at home. Obsession is not a strong enough word. You're trying to downsell it. You have spreadsheets of, like, what cards you want to buy and their prices over time. Like That's how you know if they fluctuate. Josh, if I could pay $0.07 cents for a Super Meat Boy card, why pay 10 if I know the market's going to drop in seven hours, I got to wait till seven hours. Stop and listen to what you're saying. This isn't what normal people do. I'm fucking doing stock market for the internet right now, man. Just admit it's an obsession. That's all I want. Keep doing it's, it. I don't care. It's like ADD. Or no, it's not ADD. It's like OCD, but yeah, not really. It, I mean, it's... It's, it's ADD too. It's Toby's <laughs> disorder. That's what we're going to call it. TD. TD all day. <laughs> but yeah, so today the Steam sale started and everyone's all fucking excited about it. And I was pumped. I was counting down the hours, and Josh was like, "That's stupid. I don't I, care." I was and completely very shot down my high. Yeah, I, I was, was flying high, and you fucking put me down. I clipped your wings. <laughs> is sort of what happened. You, it was the, it was, and honestly, I feel bad about it because I realized afterwards that it was like the most just, just pure like boyhood joy I've ever heard from you. <laughs> And I thought I thought you were like mostly kidding, and then I shot you down, and like the sadness that came back in me, I realized that it wasn't it wasn't kidding. I realized that <laughs> you were actually genuinely excited, and then I just tore you down. Yeah, um, well, because I mean, like, well, I've never actually had a decent usable computer for video games before. True, but around my birth, I got like an actual video card that like does graphics. <laughs> <laughs> it does graphics perfect. We're, where that, like where the, where the screen now doesn't look like there's freaking like potato slime smeared all over it. Like I can see the screen. Always comes back to potato slime with you. It does. I fucking brought it back around already. Call back. But yeah, so like now that I can actually see things, I want to buy games and like oh Steam, this is pretty cool. Like I finally jumped on that bandwagon that I used to make fun of. Of what the fuck is wrong with these people? It's a goddamn sale. Who cares? See, and that's why I came hard at you today because I remember last year you were distinctly anti Steam sale. I couldn't play games. Why be excited for something I can't do? But but why why take it away from other people? Yay, people are having sex tonight. I'm probably not. Woo! No, <laughs> fuck that. Fuck anyone who's getting laid tonight. Fuck you. Done. Like, it's the same thing. Okay. Extrapolate it out. I feel like you just argued for yourself and against yourself, like, in the same same story. But go on. Steam sale is happening. Well, when you're t- well, first of all, when you're just talking to yourself all the time, you have to argue both sides. This is how debates are done. What are you saying, Toby? <laughs> <laughs> That I'm cool. <laughs> I'm good conversation. <laughs> but yeah, so I already spent thirteen dollars today. Thirteen. On... Last I heard was ten. Well, I, I rounded down for you. You rounded down so I wouldn't make fun of you anymore. Yeah, but I'm on team blue. I think Josh is on team red. Yeah. So if you happen to be a steamer, is that a thing? Can yeah. I call people a steamer? Steamer. Yeah. If you're, if, a... if you are like a fart trapped in a blanket. You can, if you have to sign up for Steam sale, and you're on blue or red, you can, like, root for me and Josh, and then you can, like, add us on Steam or Twitter, and be like, I'm on your team, <laughs> and, when, and when fucking Team Blue destroys Team Red, I can fucking yell at Josh from like I was earlier. Like, or, you're fucking... or, like, alternate option, you could just, like, buy the games that you want, and then stop talking about it so much, and not care what team you're on. No, you gotta get teams. Josh, <laughs> you get, if you're on a team, you get more free games. That's their hook this year. I, I only clicked on the, the join me up on a team thing. So then I could yell at you about being on the other team once, and then I was No, so you joined a team, so you could be like, hmm, I got a free trading card out of this, and you fucking injected it into your veins with a sick obsession. Did that get me a trading card? Sure did. Awesome. So Yes. Oh, yeah, awesome, (laughs) see? Now it's all coming together. Ooh, it's stupid. Oh, wait, I can have one? Let me explain to you why I like trading cards, and so that I can... Um, trade them and sell them in in hopes of getting more Dota trading cards because those are really the only <laughs> ones that I care about. Oh yeah, so, so yeah, it, it's, but see, it's the same thing though. You it make is. fun of me for my obsession. It is. And honestly, is, I don't even like. You know what? No, no. <laughs> wait, first of all, fuck you because we're talking about Dota now. So the other night, the me and Josh both bought, bought compendiums this year for Dota, oh. which is fucking nerdy in itself. Like, I've really escalated my nerdiness since last year with these games. Josh. We, have, we have to stop and explain that to people first of all. So, so Dota is a an online game, five versus five. Everyone picks a hero. And there are spells that your particular hero has, and you have to face the other team and kill like this big giant tower, basically. And it's super, super hard, super, super archaic. It takes like hundreds of hours to even learn the stupid game. So we've played it a bunch together. And now, like about 125 hours worth, I think, is the the counter. (laughs) And and so 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 there's this big tournament every year. They invite a bunch of teams that are really good, and it's called the International. And they sell this thing called the Compendium for it every year, which is essentially like like a program for the International. But 
It has like a whole bunch of free stuff. It's an interactive. It. It's like an interactive program, basically. Exactly. And, it, and the thing this year is that it can level up based on things you're doing. Now go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, after mocking Josh all last year for like, you can collect the players in the Invitationals trading card internationals. Yeah. International? Invitational? Yeah. Whatever. I don't know the fucking name of it, but I own one. The International. But uh, you can collect the players' cards of your favorite teams. Like, you. oh, I like, I have, I like DK. I have their player now. Shit like that. <laughs> but. <laughs> I got this hot Dendy card. I got the, That's the name I was actually thinking of, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, so, there's all these different things you can do to unlock more points. So, anything Josh and I both do, even if it's not competitive, I make it a competition and just run my mouth the entire time. Yeah, it's always just a one-sided because... competition. <laughs> yeah, I just I just turn it into what I want it to be, and it makes it better for me. Yeah. But, like, so, Josh, like, whenever I say get excited about things, Josh shits on it and says it's stupid until he <laughs> somehow gets this hook in him where he's like, this might be interesting. So, one of the things for the compendium this year is you can have a fantasy Dota draft, which is, like, you pick players from different <laughs> teams. You're laughing right because you know I'm right. Yep. You pick players from different teams, and you make your own, like, fantasy Dota team. And then as the league goes on, like you get points for what your players do for like kills and different bullshit like that. Like it's fantasy, fantasy sport. football, but for Dota. Yeah, it's like like right there is the first the first perfect like pop culture geek mashup that we can like apply us to. Yeah, like it's like taking fantasy football, which is huge in like normal person world, and then applying it to like uh, like a nerdy geeky thing or something along those lines. So. I hosted a fantasy draft, and basically it's automated where you get six people and you pick the draft time, and everyone, if they want to show up, shows up, or if not, they don't. So I got Josh to join because you get 25 points for it towards the compendium, which is so that keeps us even. That's not the point. But I was like. <laughs> and that was all we cared about. So, like, like supposedly, that was no, all we cared about. I, no, well, no. All I cared about was A, hosting the, the draft, so we both used our ticket, and then B, making sure the draft happened, so we got the points for having the draft. Okay. So Josh and I beg in the one chat room of like, hey, people come join the draft, you know, if you didn't join one yet, come get points, blah, blah, blah. And eventually six people get in it. So now, Josh mocks almost everything stupid I enjoy. Sure. So, yeah, that's and, he, and, and you don't care about a lot of things. True. This is all okay. true. Okay. So the original draft date was like a week from yesterday at like 5.30 or 7 o'clock or something like that. Yeah. So just to make sure we I, that – I'm going to say we, but it was really I <laughs> – just to make sure that we got the points for having the Fantasy League start, I changed the draft time from, like, next week in the future to the day to yesterday at, like, 5.30 in the afternoon without Josh really knowing that I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, but, of course, but to be fair, the thought process behind this was Josh doesn't give a fuck anyway. He's not going to really want to draft the team. I'm going to let it go. So yesterday I'm bored as shit right at, like, 5.27. I load up Dota, and I was like, Oh, fuck, the draft's in three minutes. I might as well go do this because I'm here. So I go in the draft, and four of the six teams are there. So we all draft. No, there may be minimal bullshitting between each other, and we let it go. You guys are bullshitting too? <laughs> so, go on. Go on. <laughs> so Josh, I'm talking to him later in the night, and somehow the draft thing came up, and I made some comment about, like, yeah, the draft was today. I picked my team, blah, blah, blah. And Josh all of a sudden is like, what the fuck? How did, how did the draft happen today? And I was like, oh, I changed the time because I didn't think you'd care. And Josh plays this game, too, where he fake fake gets mad about things. Like, he'll be <laughs> like, I can't believe I got left out. But he doesn't really give a fuck because he didn't care about it in the first place. But then I'm like, yeah, you know, there's four of us there. We're all drafting stuff, blah, 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 blah. And then that was that little hook that Josh loves where he's like, I might have actually missed out on something here. I need to jump <laughs> in on this. What the fuck? Why didn't you tell me you changed the time? And I even said to you, I was like, I didn't think you would give a fuck. And you're like, well, I didn't until I, until other people were there. And I feel like I was left out of something. <laughs> All right. So there were some, some key details left out of the story. I don't think there were, but you felt right in, bud. Okay. Well, first of all, it wasn't like you signed on, saw the draft was going to happen, and then you did it, and then told me about it later when we talked later. We were literally talking during you drafting, and you just kept quiet about it. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't know if I, we might have been done by then. Okay, well, I don't know. Like, all right, the draft happened me, at 530, we... we were talking at like 520 and then 540. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like you ran away and hid and did the draft and then came back. And then it didn't just happen to come up, you brought it up out of nowhere. <laughs> So what? No, no, you know what I think of, actually what I think it was? I think I sent you a message and was like, fuck you, you drafted my team, where were you at? Okay, 
So I will admit, when you first came at me uh, telling me about the draft, my my first like uh, being angry about it that was fake anger. Like, like as you said, I will admit to that part. <laughs> That's what you always do. Man. It is what I always do. And the first one, I was completely joking. But then when you told me that there were like four out of six of you showed up and you guys had this little party and you were all like chatting and stuff, then I truly kind of felt left out <laughs> and like actually kind of got mad. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was so like, well, why didn't you just tell me? You like, you knew I was online. <laughs> but like, because you hate, because you hate everything. I don't, I don't hate everything. I, it's, it's a defense mechanism. <laughs> no, no, wait, you know what? This is my defense. I don't remember if this is what I thought yesterday or not, but this is what I'm going for now. Okay. You were editing something else. I was, I was. So why would I say like, come play Dota? You told me you were busy until later in the night. Well, true, but I would, I could like pop Ow! in for a. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I was editing my other podcast, Gorilla Position, which everyone should check out. Yeah, plug things. That's cool. I don't care. I'm going to. <laughs> uh, but okay, yeah, but I could have pop. I, I didn't have time for a full game of Dota, but I could have popped in for like a ten minute draft. Well, now, well, now you don't get a draft. I don't see it now. I've missed that opportunity. This is what you get. I, this, you hate every- Josh. Listen, we talk about this all the time. Uh-huh. You hate everything. And then you try to rain on my steam sale parade to bring this back around to the, to the original topic. Yeah. And this is what you get. This is payment. Is that I get to not enjoy things. <laughs> I guess I can't yes, have because, it both ways. You, yeah, because you not because you don't enjoy things so much. <laughs> like, it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. At this point, I just keep things away from you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's safer for both of us. Because if I'm like, Josh, oh my god, I have one of the ten steam adventure cards. Or summer adventure cards. Which I did earlier. Josh goes, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> You're I'm stupid. Gonna quit, <laughs> I'm going to quit work. It's a fuck. And then, oh, the, well, the best part, I guess to finish this conversation. The best part was like, it's a bull and bear market. And I was trying to be all fucking stock markety about it. And I didn't even know what the words meant. And Josh had to fucking school me and what, what bull and bear meant. Well, okay. And he used horrible fucking metaphors or uh, no. mnemonics. That was the word. Oh, that was the word I couldn't spell before. Mnemonic. Mnemonics. Okay. Well, first of all, you sounded like an idiot because you didn't know the words. So I was trying to make you sound less like an Welcome idiot. Welcome to every day. <laughs> so you said that it was a bull market, meaning the prices were going down, and that's completely wrong. Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know what it meant. I just think I said it was a bull market. You just picked something. You, you picked one at random. I, I, picked, I picked one of the two animals. Yes. And then I think you said, is it going up? And I just went with it because you, you pretty much affirmed just one of the two things for me and it tied it together. <laughs> so I, th- those weren't mnemonics that I was telling you. Like, that's why those animals are named are, – that's why that type of market is named after those animals because a bull swings its paws down – so that the market is going down. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Bulls, a bear. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. A bear swings its paws down, so the market's going down. And a bull like thrusts its horns up, so the market's going up. That's not a mnemonic. That is like why it's called that. Okay, <laughs> it's dumb. But Don't get me wrong. That's just dumb. so everyone can know my counterpoints to this because I feel like I wasted them earlier, and I want to bring them out to the light of day, Josh. Yes. I also want to point out that a bear stands up when it fights, uh-huh. and a bull puts its head down when it runs at you. No, that's it's, that's true. I will agree entirely. I'm not, listen, I'm not on the side of Wall Street here. Let's be clear. <laughs> I just, I understand. They stole my fucking money. <laughs> listen, I'm not supporting the fat cats on Wall Street. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be 1980s and I'll call them fat cats. <laughs> um, but I just understand the term. I, I, see, I see your point as well. It makes, it makes more sense that a standing bear would mean a rising market. Yeah, I agree. Or, I mean, the, my, my two thought processes were really just to be argumentative with you earlier. Oh, I understand, yeah. But it makes sense, okay. yeah. I mean, they do, I, especially the bull one. And also, the stock market, like, uh, Wall Street, had, they, ha- they have, like, the, uh, the New York Stock Exchange. That's what I'm looking for. They have, like, they have the bull out front, right? The big statue of the bull. Yeah. Why would you put a thing that means bad stuff outside of your building? That's like, that's like the, you know, I, I don't know. You put a bank robber out in front thing. of a bank. But he says the bull. Oh, I had a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dick! Yeah, exactly! <laughs> okay, you you trying to reverse what they mean stuck in my head more than the real thing. Damn I hope it does it to everybody. I hope everybody out there that's listening yeah, you... forgets which one is which. Or just goes, well, the bull puts his head down and fucking fails, like, economics 101 in college. I want to be... I either want to make people really happy, Josh, or I want to ruin lives. <laughs> There's no image. And I feel like this podcast will be the way to do that. You, you want to be the eater of worlds. You want to be the failure of Economics 101. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the Galactus of people's, like, something. You're, you're like the Charles Manson of bad grades. Well, you, you, you know what? I'll take that, because he was fucking, like, smooth. He was like, 
hey, you know what bull markets when it's down, right? Mm. You're, you're like, right, oh. you're right. What, what like, serial yeah. killer was like a real just twat <laughs> and, uh, and had no people power whatsoever? I'm going to say, I think Gacy was the one that wore like the clown outfits all the time. Well, that's not only you either. I have a clown all the time, bitch. Were there any that were like nerds, but then like, you know, couldn't get along with people? <laughs> I mean, there's fucked up ones I want to make jokes about, so. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so, so that. <laughs> well, that down, though. <laughs> Oh, bringing the show down. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> so, at, at some point, Josh, I'm probably going to throw, like, real headers in here and try to have some sort of, like, semblance of a flow. I'm not on board with that, but go on. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Like from, <laughs> so, I pulled two news stories okay. that I want to discuss with you. I'm excited. And I feel like they'll be good conversational pieces. And if not, I don't give a fuck because I want to talk about them anyway. All right. Bring it on. All right. Do you know what Nest thermostats are? Yeah, I do. They're the things that, okay. like, are smart and, like... You can control with your phone and, like, turn themselves up and down on their own and stuff. Yeah, so, like, I don't – I think Honeywell makes it, but there's a product out there called uh, Nest Thermostat, and basically it attaches to the Wi-Fi in your house and to the people that love all that home automation shit. We want everything to, like, I want to come in at 428, and then the AC will be running for eight minutes before then, and the windows will be dimmed and all sorts of other crazy bullshit. And then, like, the sexy music will start playing and the bed starts spinning. Well, that's option two. Oh, okay. Like, you have option one and option two. I'd press option one for, like, make the house as dark as possible because I'm going to go in my cave and fucking, like, just mope around and be miserable. <laughs> but if people were coming over, I'd hit option two. And that's when, like, the Barry White comes on and, like, the couch starts spinning and doing flips and whatever the hell the couches do. What if, like, your mom comes over to, like, feed your dog and she doesn't understand it and she presses option two on accident? Is that, like, super embarrassing? I don't know if she would know what it was for. She wouldn't understand what Barry White and spinning beds mean. Your mom's been around, Toby. She understands what those things mean. My mom put it out at least one time. I'm aware of that. Yeah, that's true. That's a true. That's a true fact, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Josh, I'm gonna throw a story out there real quick. Yeah. Speaking of my mom catching me doing things or catching things. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I mean, you know where this is going. Oh no. Yeah, go on. I'm gonna I'm gonna softball you the question first before I tell my story. Okay. Did your mom ever catch you doing certain things? No, because I never did any. I, I'm, a, I'm a good guy. I don't do anything. My mom may or may not have caught me getting a handy once. Oh, dear Lord. Like, full view. Oh, and then man. she never And then she never not knocked coming into my room again when girls were over. So it's actually like, it was like a, a powerful, positive thing. Where like my mom learned like, when Toby has girls in the house, I should leave him alone with her. Because I don't want to see my son's penis anymore. Like, that's not a win for you. That's, that's, I expose myself in public and people learn to avert their eyes. Like, that's not a good thing. Well, now you're just making it sound negative. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're doing, see, you're fucking doing, doing the thing again. I do. I'm fucking riding high. <laughs> you're right, Tony. It was great that you took your dick out and had a girl touch it in front of your mother. You're right. That was good. That's better. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 16 or 15 year old me was very proud of that <laughs> <laughs> did you like brag to everybody at school like hey mom saw me getting a handy now I'm totally in I, can I, t- do I tell I people this story now as like a 31 year old because it's way funnier to me because have you and her ever talked about it since then no it was never it was never discussed once but from that day on my mom never not knocked when coming upstairs when I had a girl over the house uh huh and even then, she would even leave me alone most of the time when a girl was at the house with me. Because she just, she did, never wanted to see that again. Let's talk about the first time you were alone with your mom again after that that uh, thing happened. What what was that I, like? <laughs> I, <laughs> like okay, so I, the, the, I'm assuming like the girl leaves. You probably like head back downstairs, plop down on the couch. Were you like were you like living it up? Like that's right, mom. <laughs> No, like, my house was never like that. I was a fucking outcast in my house. Oh, okay. So my entire home existence was confined to my bedroom as it was. Oh, weird. So it was pretty much like I walked the girl downstairs to walk her out, and I walked back upstairs right away and, like, watch TV again. Huh. Or play video games or something else horrible that I did with my free time. Did you ever, like, pop back in and, like, do a check-in the rest of that day? Like No, like, that, that, that pretty much scared her off. Because <laughs> I, I actually think the door was closed, but she just opened it and walked in. Yep. And that's when I was like, oh, sh-, you know. See, I always thought moms did that, like, to catch you doing something, which, or, 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 like, maybe she intended to catch you, but then, like, the reality of actually catching you was so terrible <laughs> <laughs> that she never wanted to do it again. <laughs> well, that's that, like, that kind of mindset, I think, is what was the whole relationship was based on with my mom, where, like, she would say things to, like, try to fuck with me, like, if you don't go do this, you can't go out this weekend. Uh-huh. 
And then I say, fine, I'm not going to do it. I won't go out this weekend. And I just fucking, like, purposely, like, instigate her and, like, make it worse. To call her bluff <laughs> constantly. So I think it's, like, the same kind of thing of, like, well, I'm going to catch him. And, I just, and then just, like, subconsciously, I just aggravated it or, like, escalated it as much as possible. And just made it into, like, hey, mom, look, I guess. <laughs> so, so you make fun of me for shitting on everything that you do. But you literally made your mom, like, a lame duck president. Like, <laughs> you took away all of her power. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm I the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean your mom would have a lot to commiserate about. <laughs> oh, well, like, one of my uh, one of my best friends is, like, my friend's wife. Uh-huh. Like, her and I are really close. And I got her a job with my mom, with where my mom works. But, like, her and my mom apparently used to tell stories about me all the time. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. So that was, like, I think that was, like, the best comeuppance I ever got was, like, I'd go to my friend's house. And, like, I don't call my mom as much as I should probably. But, like, I would go to my friend's house, and his wife would be like, why did you call your mom? Did you call your mom yet? Have you seen your mom? Did you talk to your mom? And I'd get all fucking pissed off because whatever my mom would say to me, I'd have to hear from my friend's wife, too. You, you had that coming. That's payback. That is that's I karma. That's karma points. Yeah, I, it, it is. It's what I get for getting my friend the job. I, I agree. That's, <laughs> I, I surely had that one coming. I, I never really thought about it. The uh, negative repercussions sure. of like it's like pretty, it's pretty much like your girlfriend and your ex like hanging out together. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, you want a friend? Like oh, she's nice. And then like what the fuck did I get myself into? Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, it's it's like if you set your ex girlfriend up with a job with your friend. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that to happen. But to but to, <laughs> to, swing, to Josh to swing this back around to the point of this conversation. Yeah, you had a story for me, a new story. Yeah. So Nest also makes smoke alarms. Okay. Or smoke detectors, whatever you want to call them. They recently got put back on the market because apparently, like, there was uh, an issue with, like, a safety thing or safety recall uh-huh. where to turn off the smoke alarms. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Turn off the or, smoke alarms. Well, you reflect upon this. Let's say your smoke alarm goes off. Yeah. And it's, like, an error or a warning or you just want to turn it off anyway. Sure. What do you have to do to turn it off, Josh? Uh, I usually walk up to it and wave my hand in front of it until the smoke goes away. But don't you have to press that little white indented button to make it stop or no? Not the ones I have experienced with. Well, like, okay, the only time I've ever set off a smoke alarm is, like, when you cook something and, like, you burn it or whatever, and then, like, oh, man, there's smoke in the house, and you gotta go, like, the, the, the alarm goes off, and, like, I just wave my hand in front of the smoke detector until the smoke dissipates, and then it quits. That's ah. why my old landlord went to that apartment hated me, because she put the smoke detector right above the stove, oh, man. and I burn shit, like, once a month, and then they have to call, you know, like, the fire company for the whole apartment complex, <laughs> and then the one day she got a lecture because, it's $3,000 every time they have to come out here! And I would just look at her and be like, you have the smoke alarm above the stove. Like, any slight mistake here, and it goes off yeah. and sets off the entire building. There is not enough margin of error. <laughs> <laughs> it's slight. It's very slight. <laughs> but, uh, so, ne- the Nest smoke alarms, to turn them off, Josh, uh-huh. they're motion activated. Okay, so you had to stop so moving? They, they, no, so, like, if you waved your hand in front of it, turned off. That doesn't seem good. Right. Like, of all products I would want to not turn off if I was, like, running out of my house. On fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a fire in the house! The alarm's going off. You fucking run and take off. Like, I guess the issue was it would turn off from that motion. <laughs> so, like, alright, let's 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 paint a scenario then. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want you to brainstorm, like, we're gonna shop this one out, because I thought of you and, like, the dumb shit we come up with all the time. Uh-huh. And I was like, this is a perfect story for us to discuss. Okay. Let's say, let's say, for example... Um, I'm still up, it's, it's late at night, I'm up in the living room playing video games, and, uh, maybe I've got some candles burning, cause, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice time, and, uh... Nice time with yourself, I understand. What's that? Go on. A nice time with yourself, I understand. A nice time with myself playing video games, there's, there's not anything wrong with that. Uh, how about, how about the rest of the family, they're upstairs asleep, just, uh, upstairs, sleeping away. Well, you know, one thing leads to another, video games get, uh, you know, heated, I knock my candle over, fire starts. So naturally, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of there, right? Like, it's it's like on an airplane, you put your per- other person's mask on first. That rule doesn't apply in a fire. You got to get out. I, don't, I mean, it probably does. But <laughs> but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get away from the fire, so I'm going to run. I'm going to run out the door. But if the smoke alarm's going off and then I run by it, it's going to shut off, and then the rest of my family is going to die in a fire. Because Unfortunately, you installed a smoke alarm right by your front door you ran out of. I did. And it thought everything was cool because you were running out the front door. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It was like, all right, fine. Hey, you know what? He's good. Calm down. False alarm, everybody. Nest system off. But, <laughs> but you know what? The bottom floor of my house, 
still burning, Toby. I didn't put the fire oh. out before I ran away. In that scenario, too. And then the cab, then the bed starts spinning and your parents start hooking up because they think it's time. Sure. And then the house is burning down. It's all fucking, it's just a horrible situation for everybody. So you think the nest system is set up that when, as soon as the smoke alarm goes off, it starts like Barry White, get it on, like option two. It's well, like, man, it, dude, you got so hot in here. <laughs> Clearly. It's, it, it's on fire and melting. God only fucking knows what's going to do. Oh, true. Yeah. Maybe it's just on the fritz. You're right. Yeah. Can we blame a system that's melting for doing things that it shouldn't do, though, to be fair? Uh, I mean, it's America, so yeah. Okay. So that's a bad scenario. Like, that is a a flawed (laughs) product, is what we're saying. Yes. And, like, all since I saw a story, I was trying to think of other products where, like, the point of what it would do would, like... I don't know how to explain this right. Like, other products (laughs) would be, like, fucked up like that. We're like, okay, there's a fire. I'm running. It's turning itself off now. Yeah, that's right. But I can't think of anything else that would, like, even be remotely close to that. Me neither. Yeah, no. Like, normally, you know, the the thing that they're trying to prevent, they don't, like, actively then hinder. (laughs) Which is what what that's happening. Like, my whole job is to keep people from burning to death. But when they try to exit the building, then I turn off. That that doesn't, uh, that takes a real, real special product to do. Actually, you know what? Now, I was thinking about it. The one thing that's close, you know those fucking seatbelts that automatically lock when you get thrust against them? Yeah. And then you can't, like, get unstuck? It's like, it's like that shit. Well, that's so you don't fly out the window, bro. No, no, but, like, when you have those crappy automatic ones, yeah. like, the, when the, when, not the one you pull down yourself, and the one that just, like, when you close the door, it closes oh, on you. those are stupid. But go on. Those have weird locking systems where, like, when they activate and, like, you jam on the brakes, they, like, lock funny. And you can't fucking get out or move. I think so it all seems like it makes it worse. Those. All seatbelts have those where if you break, they instantly lock where they are. So you don't fly forward and break your ribs. Well, yeah. But, I mean, like, on normal ones, you can just kind of, like, suck your gut in a little bit. Lean and, like, adjust it. You can, like, yeah. and it fixes itself. But, yeah. So that's a fucked up product, Josh. That is pretty messed up. You're right. That's All right. I have a question. This is, like, it's, it's made by Nest, right? Yeah. And they're all, like, Wi-Fi connected, like, smart devices. What needed to be smart about a smoke detector? Like, I'm pretty sure, like, we handled that technology. Like, what... If my smoke detector is Wi-Fi connected, what's it going to do for me? The only thing I can think of would be you can see on your phone from not like, when you're like not home. Oh god, like, my, my house, house is on fire! fire. <laughs> but is that something that, you I really can't... need to know before you get home, though? <laughs> I mean, I mean, does it really need to ruin your trip to the mall? <laughs> <laughs> if the house was already on fire, I feel like it'd be too late. But if you could somehow like be preemptive with it, I guess it'd be okay. Maybe if it, maybe if it was like smart enough to like call the fire department. Yeah, but, but if your Wi-Fi catches on fire, you're fucked anyway. My Wi-Fi is always on fire. Blazing speed. This is, yeah, I, I know. I know from the <laughs> fucking hour it took us to record this. <laughs> but, uh, so, Josh, horrible segue. Speaking of... I think it's things, better if you point it out, so that's good. I, I'm going to point it out every time. Great. Until it just flows, I'm going to just point it out every time. It's never going to flow. Speaking of flowing... Oh, God. Josh, <laughs> where's this going? <laughs> Thank you. You really helped me, help me swing this back around. Josh, for $5,000, uh-huh. you, you have a lot of disposable income, I know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've got a ton. Go on. For $5,000, Match.com, in, spot, in partnership with somebody else, will match you up with someone who looks exactly like your ex-girlfriend. Why is that a feature that I would want? Th- that, okay, that was, that was the conversation behind this. Of all the people I've ever dated and I think about or whatever... Rem- a, a horrible, horrible reminder of who they were, like what they looked like. Yeah, seems like the worst idea ever because, especially with like how fucked up my brain is, if I saw someone that looked like a person, I'd be like, I really fucking miss that person. And the other, like, an old person, we'll say like old, old clone. Yeah. We'll, so we'll pretend they're, we'll they're, they're clones. Okay, well, let's pretend they're. We clones. have we have Dolly and then Dolly's clone. Well, if they're clones, think... maybe I'm okay with it. Yeah. Well, okay. But like, so you'd have all these memories in your head of. Hey, I remember when X and I did this, and you'd be like, new person, why don't you remember this? <laughs> oh, wait, it wasn't you. Yeah, because, like, the second you actually meet and talk to this person, the illusion is broken, right? That Then yeah. you realize they're not the person that they look like, but you're not with that person anymore, but you broke up for a reason, and you're all sad still, because it's still not them. It's, they're, they're still not them. <laughs> but if it was actually a real clone, that I'm assuming would have... All right, so are we doing like the like the multiplicity style of clone, where they're like all the same person? Where they get where they get dumber and dumber? Listen, she touched my peppy, Josh. I will take one level of dumb lower in order to recreate something. Like that's, I feel like that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. 
Like was just one. At, notch. It had to stop at one. Yeah, it stops at one. Yeah, I'm only. I only need one. Like, why do I need more than one? Like, because uh, at some point the new one would probably break up with you too. Listen, I need two tops. Like, and that's at the same time. But <laughs> that's true. <laughs> if if it's an exact clone, like I'm gonna screw up in all the same ways I did before, right? <laughs> I'm well, not... not even that. But like, if it's an exact clone, they'd have the memory of this is why we broke up, and it'd be fucking a waste of five thousand. Why it'd be wouldn't more want a waste that? of five thousand dollars than this was? I would want a clone of the person right before we met, so I could recreate all of that as well. Or maybe like, and then like the day and after. Then like when it gets, <laughs> then when it gets close, <laughs> and then when it gets close to like breakup time, you're like, this is around the point where this happened. I gotta make sure I don't do this, and then see if I try like. I'm gonna zig when I zagged. <laughs> it's like butterfly effect slash Groundhog's Day slash something else. I don't know what else though. Now, the Groundhog's Day of Girlfriends, I would pay $5,000 for that, where no matter what you did and how mad you made her, the next day it's all good again. That'd be perfect. But, like, I would have that fear of, like, tomorrow's the day where this just stops working, because I've seen this movie before, and at some point things change. So, like, the fear would be, like, you wake up the next day and be like, I fucked those five girls last night, and I can't take this back now. <laughs> or, like, or I just, I, like, demanded she make me a sandwich while I was playing Halo, like, ten times that night. <laughs> uh, and... I, you know what? That speaks a lot about our personalities, I think. I immediately go with, like, I cheated with, like, five different people. Josh goes, I had her make me too many sandwiches. No, yours goes to, like, like adultery, and mine goes to food and excess in video <laughs> games. Yeah, that, that sums us up. <laughs> Well, okay, so I'm going to put an asterisk on that. I don't cheat, so I'm not going to put the adultery on my fucking... <laughs> on your list. To, on Toby's scorecard, but... <laughs> oh. I, too, would like a sandwich in Halo sometime. Yeah, that's all I want. Toby, that's all I want in life, period. <laughs> Is, a, like, a girl who, like, doesn't give me crap about wanting a sandwich in Halo. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're both voting no on five thousand dollars to meet someone looks like someone you really cared about and think, fucking hates you. I think I would I would want to hear some reports about the first people that did it. Like, that's what I'm most interested in here. Is like, hey, so how did that go? Like, what happened with you and the first girl? Like, what went wrong? And then is this not just a terrible, like, heartbreaking thing to see this new girl every day that you spent five thousand yeah. dollars on? Like, um, this, it, it really seems like the worst idea ever. And here's a messed up thing: Does the new girl know that she looks identical to your ex when you guys get paired up? I think it's a service. So I think you're both signing up for find me someone I used to like, which seems even Wait, worse. That seems impossible then because, like, what are the odds that you – she looks like someone you used to date and you look like someone she she used to date. That doesn't make any sense. It's, but why not? Because if you're both – because listen, you're both obviously fucked up people who can't let go of the past and want exact replicas of someone you used to like but just can't have that actual person. No, I, I understand all that. But like what, what's the chances of like a carbon copy of a couple that used to exist? That, But that'd be – that so, makes it even creepier. That's I, I didn't think about that, but that's awesome. It makes it way creepier because was the, the scenario that you just described, how this worked, was that she had to match so, someone from his past and he had to match someone from, from her past. Yeah. So they had to literally recreate a couple that used to exist, or I guess not a couple that used to exist, but like two two Visually. people, two things have to match up, right? Yeah. That seems hard. That seems hard to me. This seems it seems like an amazing idea. Now, <laughs> you, you think this is a manual process, or are they like using some computer program to scan pictures or something? I would want them to actually search and not just have fucking like facial recognition. What if they find the perfect girl and she's not into it? She's like, no, dummy, that's a bad idea. What if both people signed up for it and they just found each other again? <laughs> she looks That'd just like your ex-girlfriend. That's because it is my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I paid $5,000 for this? <laughs> but, but if they fall in love happily ever after again, then it was worth it. I guess that's true. I mean, people have gotten back together over weirder things. Oh, so how'd you two re- reconnect? Oh, well, we're both fucking weird and fucked up and desperate and paid $5,000 to find each other, but not really, but we found each other anyway. So then, like, we both wasted ten thousand dollars we're gonna use on our wedding, and that's why we don't have a wedding, like a nice wedding right now. This sounds like a rom com to me. Like, it, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, like I'm, I'm seeing like Jennifer Lopez and uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey <laughs> as stars, <laughs> and he's also a stripper because this is the sequel to Magic Mike. Okay, so if we're gonna make a movie. About this rom com uh-huh. where people pay money to find each other, but not try to find each other, but find each other. Yeah. What name would we give it? Ooh. Um. Uh. 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 uh, uh you only only date twice. All right. Um, 
uh, 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 c- coming, coming back around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm really, really let you fly out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> love again. Um, no, no, it'd be love again, again, like dot 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 again. Love I'd again, like again. Would. No, no, the ellipses. <laughs> the ellipses are key in that title. The ellipses are that 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 is a that's a pretty clutch point. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. How about did I already say twice in a lifetime? <laughs> did I already did I, did I use that one? Um, how about how about how about the do over? That 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 works. That sounds like a listen. I'm changing my casting. That is a uh, 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 um, what is his name? He was in the movie where he danced and um, Brad. Flash no, he he was in the Hangover. Fullers. What was his name? He was in the Hangover. He was in uh, Silver Lining Playbook. Uh, Bradley Cooper. Bradley this Cooper. is a Bradley Cooper movie that I'm describing right now. <laughs> All right, so it's called The Do Over. Um, okay. We'll we'll go ahead and uh, say that um, his co-star in Silver Linings Playbook. Who I'm also forgetting her name. I'm terrible. At, uh, listen, you're the. Why pop is side. recasting the same movie? Don't be one of those people. You're one of those fucking lazy directors. Yeah. You're like no. fucking, Josh, you know what? You're fucking Judd Apatow in it up right now. Exactly. You're casting the same Toby, seven people. That was in the, the meta film. joke that I was making. <laughs> Because they're I'm like, there are apparently through. five people in Hollywood, and they make the same movie over again. I'm glad, I'm glad we pulled that through together. Okay, Toby, I have created the perfect title for this movie, which is The Do-Over. What is the tagline for this movie? So I will start. In a world where two people used to love each other. Now, <laughs> now finish the end. Uh, like, skip to the end of that trailer and sum it up for me. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of pressure. You made me name the damn movie! <laughs> Um, is it called The Do-Over? The Do-Over. In theaters this summer. Uh, well, okay, so I'm going to switch up the plot a little bit. Well, okay, I mean, you're not allowed to do that, but okay. Listen, well, see, I, I, if, I if you don't want to like, yes and me, I that's feel fine. Like, I, I feel like the metaphor that we need to add here, uh-huh. I want to put, like, a fool and his money are, sw- are soon parted somehow in this movie. Okay. So I was trying to think of a good tagline with, like, that kind of concept. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. How about <laughs> love can bloom on a battlefield? No, that's a different. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Love does cost a thing. <laughs> that's the title. No, that's the title. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> you know what? That's either this movie or the Pretty Woman sequel. Like I don't know which one. <laughs> You know what? Uh, go ahead and copyright that. We're starting pre-production on Love Does Cost a Thing tomorrow. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag Love Does Cost a Thing. Uh, we're quitting our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I love it. <laughs> Someone get me Bradley Cooper. <laughs> get Bradley Cooper on the line. <laughs> so good. Josh, speaking of us going on the fly, yeah. <laughs> Josh, every day there's something to be thankful for. Sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I've compiled a list of the next seven days worth of holidays. So when people listen to this, they can think like, "Wow, today's National So and So Day." There's a holiday they, every day for the next seven days. There's a holiday every day for every day. Okay. I mean, it's a lot of bullshit ones. That cheapens holidays for me. It, it cheapens a lot of things. Okay. But. We're gonna. I'm gonna tell you some things to be happy for. Okay. And okay. we can think of what we can do on these days, or like <laughs> to, to to commemorate this this <laughs> joyous occasion. Yeah. Okay. So as of when everyone hears this, it's the t- June twentieth. Josh, June twentieth is National Take Your Dog to Work Day. That's the Friday after Father's Day. Toby, I don't own a dog, so this holiday just makes me sad. Okay. It's it's like a Valentine's Day. <laughs> 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 makes me wish I had things I don't have. <laughs> So, okay, so tagline, take your dog to work day. <laughs> Makes me wish things I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Try, you're trying to catch, uh, catch fire in a bottle there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, no, we're doing it for all. No, we're going to keep going, bro. Okay, yeah. Take your dog to work day. Your boss isn't the only bitch that's there. <laughs> Perfect. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know take what? Take your dog to you work day. Tell me, I'm not on your level. <laughs> <laughs> National take your dog to work day. Oh, is, is it my turn now? <laughs> National Take Your Dog to Work Day, don't smell each other's butts. Only the dogs can do that. I mean, that, listen, you should have stopped while you were on top. <laughs> National Take Your Dog to Work Day, stop him while you're on top. Doggy style. Oh, man. 
No. You really fucking feel... Josh, you tanked this. <laughs> I tanked this. You had an amazing line about bitches being at work, and then you went on to talk about sniffing butts. I don't know. All right. Okay. Yeah. This is, I might be edited out. Josh, <laughs> June 21st, National Hollering Contest Day. Hollering? Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's like... Hog hollering? Like, it might be hog hollering. It might be like, holler at your boy. Let me holler at you, girl. Hey, yeah. girl. All day. Let National day for that. Boy. But there's a contest. So the best people from all walks of life get together and try to holler at their honeys. Is that what or it their is? Hogs. I mean, I, or their hogs. Yeah, like, I mean, I feel like this is a really broad... How do you how do you compare a hog holler versus a holler at your boy? Like, how do you... Because when you holler at pigs, it's like, suey, right? Suey. Yeah, yeah, suey. Okay, but when I holler at the ladies, Josh, I yell, shoddy! Shoddy? Shoddy. There's more double there. <laughs> Exactly. But, Listen. Yeah. I'm from the East. I got different slang than you. You are you are from the East. My accent. I'm from a flyover state, so we we don't have slang or yeah, any culture fucking, of any kind, really. Yeah, you're, I, know, I, I know you have no culture. Yeah. That's why you, that's why you're, you're like at this game. No, it's class. I have no class that you're thinking of. Josh, June 22nd. Uh-huh. National Chocolate Eclair Day. I, I really want to meet a girl named, named Claire on Chocolate Eclair Day so then I can make lots of chocolatey Claire jokes. We're moving right on. <laughs> Do you think we'd fall in love forever? Lock that down! <laughs> Josh, June 23rd, National Pink Day. Pink Day, huh? So that sounds like a sexy day to me. The, like, I mean, with I'm, how my mind is, the first thing I thought of was the, uh, the lint trap. <laughs> downstairs. Okay. The I thought that was going a different way. But, <laughs> oh, the lint trap downstairs. Okay. No, it was going how I expected. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to no, we're, we're, listen. We're making this, this is one big circular thing. It is. You just like you, if you put this on repeat right now, it's just one that's like a freaking like Mobius strip. Of if you, if jokes. you play this, if you play this episode backwards, we're telling you to worship the devil. Uh, so don't <laughs> let your moms hear it. <laughs> what well, neat guys? Uh, and then then I said that the devil is good. The devil is Lord. Uh, worship Toby and Josh. Yeah, Josh. National Pink Day. Two in the pink. None in the stink. Two, two in the pink commemorate our day. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, it's National Pink Day. A nation in the pink. None in the stink. <laughs> everyone's just happy that day? Yeah, everyone's happy. No there, no one's getting anything in the stink. Josh, I think we're going to have to... This is like a warm-up, as we said in the beginning. This is issue zero. These will get better at some point. We're really fine right now. But there's also shitty days this week. Yeah, I'm blaming. Listen, I'm blaming the holidays. It's not. It's, it's, not it's all about the calendar. The calendar is what's fucking us right now. That's right. Josh, June twenty fourth, swim a lap day. Swim, swim a lap day. Yeah. How is that a that, that's not a day? That's a task. What if you don't have a pool? It's like it's like the fucking dog thing all over again. It's if like Valentine's having... Day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, like, but this like it's not even like do a lap day where you could like maybe. Like, oh, I can go run a lap. I can jog a lap. I can, you know, Here's, only can swim. So it's, it's like, a, like a get active type day. So the tagline is, like, the, the tag is, shut your trap and swim a lap. That's what it is. A.K.A. upper, upper middle class day. <laughs> upper middle class day. <laughs> A.K.A. please come to the YMCA. We, we miss you day. <laughs> they, they should tie that in. That's okay. like how you like get people to come back. That and the uh, boys in the showers. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a bonus. Yeah. That's that's like that's like when you get a donut and you bite into it and you find out that it was cream filled. And it was like, oh man, I just I lost a donut a, and this is awesome. I lost a, a tooth in a donut once, and then I ate the tooth and the donut at the same time. <laughs> I feel like we just summed you up just in, in a <laughs> single like two line story. A toothy donut. Everything Peter? we need to know about Toby and his toothy donut. <laughs> that's Josh, your autobiography. <laughs> Josh, June twenty fifth, National Catfish Day. Now. I have a, I know, like, I know, I know the question's going already. Yep. I'm taking the hard pull. This is the day where you fucking trick, trick each other on the internet, okay. and you just fucking catfish the fuck out of each other. Yeah, I, I wondered if it was real catfish or if it was catfishing because that was very important uh, to know which one. So, if this is National National Catfish Day and we're talking internet pranks, then everyone just pose as a 14 year old girl who's actually an FBI agent <laughs> in in a Yahoo chat room. <laughs> That's what we do. That's how we celebrate that day. Listen, National I, Catfish Day. Yeah, you'll be trapping more than fish. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Entrapment. That's what this is all about. <laughs> Na- National Catfish Day. He's got a young one on the hook. <laughs> National Catfish Day. 
Enjoy this bait in your mouth. <laughs> All, always for the for an in the mouth joke. <laughs> Uh, well, fish have hooks in their mouth, Josh. This has nothing to do with fucking... When you're fishing them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Josh, bring us back around till the next time we record. Josh, June 26th is Forgiveness Day. And that's the day where I come crawling to you and say, <laughs> Josh, I'm sorry for calling you an asshole all the time and fucking your mom. So that took a weird turn at the end. No uh, tagline needed. Because I liked it at the beginning, where you were having to apologize to me, which is different than normal, I feel like. I apologize for shit. You fucking instigate me until I start yelling at you. Oh, get this guy. Oh, stop crying. Oh, go fucking trade trading cards. So you do. <laughs> and you make it worse. <laughs> See, you were always talking a big game about how I mean to you, but I think this podcast shows that you bully me, which just happened right then. <laughs> I'm the Tory. I told Josh the other day, I'm one of the best friends you could ever have if you wanted a best friend who would constantly just ride him about everything and try to fucking, like, troll him into saying things or doing things <laughs> yeah. or purposely aggravating him for no reason. If instead of a friend you want a mortal enemy, then Toby's your man. National Catfish Day is actually perfect because I bait you all the time with so many fucked up things that, like, that, the Catfish Day and Forgiveness Day being together is, like, the perfect combination. Yeah, I expect I expect one of those stupid, like... Um, anime statue pictures that he used to link me on Catfish Day. <laughs> I expect you to bring that bit back. <laughs> oh, I should. For, for <laughs> when Josh, Josh and I used to talk on a hall, it's like a, a chat thing at work all the time, and you can link pictures in it. So I used to link pictures to, of, jo- to, listen, of Josh to Josh. I used to link pictures to, 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 <laughs> I used to link pictures to Josh of those weird, like, big, busty anime girl statues where, like, they have no clothes on and, like, tits hanging out. I'd wonder, like, who the fuck would buy these? And but he, but, he, but all right. So first of all, he was finding them in his RSS feeds. So like, yeah. he's already closer to the subject matter than I am. I'm subscribed to Tomo Pop, so it's like it's like real toys, like cool toys, and it's fucking like this girl has. She's a cat, but by a cat, I mean like she has like a paw print on her nipple, and that's it. Yeah, she's <laughs> it's, a like, quote, like, unquote, it's like cat. that level of toys. Yeah. So I used to always post the pictures in the chat so Josh would see them at work and have to hide them, and then he Josh caught on to me. So I had to do, like, more trickier things and freaking, like, hide them under, like, G-O-O-G-L, tiny URL URLs. Yeah, you're, like, yeah, you're shortening them. Then you're telling me, like, hey, man, check out this new video game and, like, weird <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, the trick was always hiding the URL because when you see, like, naked naked kitty statue, j- dot JPG, <laughs> it, really, it really fucks up the gameplay. Yeah, the, the joke's over at that point. The <laughs> fun and games are done. <laughs> So, so you should celebrate Catfishing Day more than most, I think. It's your I, day. I'm going to have to. I'm going to fuck with everybody that day. Yeah. But yeah, so Josh, if you ever need a reason this next week of why you should be happy and celebrate, now you know. Great. I'm <laughs> So uh, this is what's going to bring us into what's going to be the end of our podcast every week, Josh. Oh, good. <laughs> the torture is finally over. <laughs> but the only way this is really going to work so I don't have to find bullshit questions from places like Yahoo Answers, is people need to talk to us, Josh. They always wanted to ask us questions in the past. Now is their time. It can happen. It can, it can happen. happen. What you're going to want to do is... You, anybody. You, okay. Josh, you can ask yourself questions for us to answer. So I'm not completely out of the running because I'm on the show. It's not, it's not like, it's not like a, a contest at Microsoft or something. No. Like okay. we, are, we are just as much a part of this as anybody else. Great. Okay. So what everyone's going to want to do is email cast at geek-pop.com. And all you got to do is just ask us questions. So is that G-E-E-K-D-A-S-H-P-O-P.com? Is that the website? Yeah. Okay. Ge- it's – now you're fucking me up. <laughs> Geek-pop.com. And it's not going to be – I don't know what the address is unless Josh remembers. We also have a Tumblr where we can put things, right? We do have a Tumblr. You can tumble us questions. You can tumble us questions. That Tumblr is at geek-pop.com. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. That sounds like the thing I bought for this. It is, it is. <laughs> but yeah, so I have a couple questions that I feel like Josh and I can really handle. And we don't really just want... I'm going to throw it out there now. I'm going to assume most of this audience right now for issue zero are people that used to watch over Analyze. You yes. think it's a fair? You feel like it's a fair assumption? Uh, no, because we're going to instantly blow up. Okay. The entire if internet's you... listening to this. Sweet. If yeah. you used to watch us and overanalyzed, uh-huh. I'm throwing this out there now. Yes. The morator- moratorium, right? Is that the right word? Mor- Help me with my words. That means that it can't be brought up anymore. Okay. We're having a mor- moratorium yeah. on what happened to overanalyzed. It is gone. 
There's no more YouTubing videos. It's just this podcast now. I do not want 10, 10 questions of, are you guys doing the videos again? The answer is no. Man, I feel like, I feel like you really just like brought down the podcast. <laughs> Like, but this man, is more fun, Josh. We Josh, we do whatever the fuck we want we, to now. We were, having, we were having fun, and then you had to go yell at our audience before we even have an audience. I just want to make it preemptive. I just don't want to... saying, like, why do you got to be a dick to them? Because I love them. Toby, 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 be nice. Okay. okay. Hey, everybody, we're back. Uh, sorry <laughs> about that. Had to pull Toby aside for a second. Um, he won't act like that anymore. Send us any questions you want. <laughs> I'm not going to answer them. <laughs> <laughs> I will veto that question immediately. <laughs> but yeah, so we did, like we're basically you'll see after I give Josh these questions. But I just want like we just want goofy life questions or actual advice you want or just not. We just we're trying to move on from the old old show, so we're trying to avoid that one specific question. If I was a dick, I apologize. It's you not were. the twenty. It's not the twenty sixth yet. But you can listen to this on the twenty sixth and fast forward to this time. And hear me say I'm sorry to you. I was going to say, and forgive Toby. <laughs> <laughs> here, watch. This is what I'm going to do. Ready? Yeah. I'm sorry. And in that silence, you just insert your own name. That's like I'm talking to you. That's a, that's a personalized apology for me to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy has a weird voice. He sounds like a robot. Yeah, it's, just, it's the speak and spell version of our podcast. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy. J- J-E-R-E-M-I. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy smoked a lot of cigarettes, so now he has that thing you hold up to his throat so he can That's talk. That's fucked up. It's sad. Let's listen, Jeremy. This podcast is dedicated to Jeremy. How the fuck am I bringing it down? You're talking about people with fucking voice boxes and shit. <laughs> I think voice boxes are funny. What can I say? <laughs> so I, Josh, I randomly grabbed <laughs> three questions from Yahoo Answers while we were waiting for you to fucking figure out your internet before. Wow, look at you doing work. They're coming. To, they're coming to you now. Okay. Question well, number one. Yes. I'm going to assume it's from a girl. I'll have names because I don't care about the names. I, don't know, I couldn't find where to find them. I'm not good at Yahoo Answers. You're bad at the internet because that's, I, I, I that's internet. simple, bro. <laughs> it's not on there. Josh, all caps, the whole question. Help me find my bra size. Can someone find out my bra size? Thanks, smiley face. Okay, first of all, I need to know this girl's age. This is very important. <laughs> Are we going to jail for discussing this? <laughs> because I can help her find her bra size. Trust me. <laughs> That's what I would tell her a lot. Trust me. <laughs> like, there's a lot of times with, like, all sorts of, like, with Reddit or, like, I used to be on other forums where people are like, I have something fucked up with my hand. I think I have an infection. I've been throwing up for the past week. I think I'm dying. What do I do? And like, you, the answer is go to the fucking doctor. I don't or think you go to a girl. doctor for this. I don't think, well, no, I don't think you like, want to... <laughs> the answer is outside. The answer is not the internet saying... Help me find my bra size. Text, like, at the end of it. It's like, hey, I'm sure you know at least one other female. Maybe ask them how they know theirs. And Which then go like, to the mall. Worst case scenario, she doesn't know a single other woman in her entire life. She could just go try on a couple sizes and figure out which one it is, right? I mean, it doesn't like, seem like rocket scientists, like, do your boobs fit in it or not? Like, that's that's how you figure yeah. it out. Like, if I, I – I don't know what size, like, jeans I wear. I usually just grab, like, a couple sizes and see which one fits and goes, oh, I guess this fits now. And yeah, I guess it's the it. one that isn't too tight and isn't too big. <laughs> it's the one that's just right. I'm going to call this the Goldilocks solution. Yeah. So I need her to Goldilocks some bras at Target. That's what I need. Yeah. I mean, Target's fine. Walmart? I don't, you don't think I'm the fucking, like, fancy Victoria's Secret. Just No, go no, s- of course not. Go somewhere. <laughs> Or, Go so that's, out. Get that's out of the fucking a. house. <laughs> <laughs> to quit, quit typing things that are private into the internet. That's really <laughs> what you need to be doing. Uh, that's option A. Option B is she joins some sort of nudist colony where she never has to think about bras ever again. That wouldn't matter. That's, that's, that is, that's, that's the drastic approach, but, but equally as valid, I think. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Josh, are these good rapper names? I'm part of a rock band but can rap, so I want to do a bit of rapping as a side project. Amazing. I, ha- I have so many ideas for songs, including using a remix of Time from the film Inception as an instrumental for a rap. Because Great. I'm sure no one's ever used Time from the film Inception as an in- instrumental for anything. I'm sure I never. can't. I can't go on YouTube right now and find 50 copyrighted videos with Time in the background from wait, Inception. Wait. Are, are you inserting your own words in this question now at this point? I'm, I'm just vamping over as I go. Tell me, are you hurting the integrity of this question? <laughs> I, I'm expanding out the question as I ask it. Okay. Please, Josh, please stick to what's on the page, Toby. Stick to the script? Stick to the script. Toby, if I wanted an improviser, I would have hired an improviser. 
I got you. Yeah. Josh, obviously I need a name, but I'm kind of struggling in that department. Obviously. I had a couple of ideas, but I'm not sure if they're good enough. Iron Matt, Mad Matt, Hardline, All Guns Blazing. I don't want a name like MC Swag or anything crap like that. Then again, I don't know if I could using my real name would be a good idea either. Could you help me out? First of all, like, I, I came into this question wanting to make some hella fun of Matt, but Hardline is a kick-ass rapper name. <laughs> right? Hardline. That's good. That's really good, Matt. Stick with that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> question answered. <laughs> uh, how you want to go with option C on this one? Yeah, like, this is a pretty easy one. You hit gold on a Hardline. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, Larry, if I were to incorporate his name into into a name into a, a rapper name, I always like MC in front of a rapper name. I feel like that's that's nice and old school. So how about like MC Fat Matt? That sounds good, right? Like with a PH because he's cool. Is that, is that even still a thing anymore? Like, is, is that he, has has Fat with PH been like a thing for like the past decade? Is it not a is it not a thing anymore? I feel I like it's it, not. Okay. Was it? Wait. First of all, like follow up question. Was it ever a thing other than something that people made fun of in teen movies? That's fat, yo. Like no that. one's ever. You maybe said that at one point. I, I don't talk like that. How, I say sh- Josh. I say shit. Swag. How about MC Swaggin Matt? How about how about he, he just <laughs> calls himself hashtag YOLO? <laughs> That's his rapper name. I feel like the the name is dependent on the kind of rap you do. How about how about hashtag uh no how about how about MC hash Matt so then it's like hashtag but he put his name in it instead. He like flipped I, I, that shit and reversed it. Swa- he's swagging it up. How about how about how about every time he does a song he doesn't call it a remix he calls it a remat. How about he's like I'm retweeting this next joint and then fucking just like does like a remix. But it's I a retweet should... cuz he, he, he you know what I think he has to go hard with the yeah, hashtags. Hashtags. Yeah. Yeah, if he's going to be a theme rapper yeah, it's it, he should he should do it. It's, it's like you know crisscross. Their name wasn't just crisscross. They they lived that shit, man. They wore backwards clothes. Did you ever do that when you were that age? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I so definitely. I. <laughs> they, they were my it, jam. It's fun as a guy until the first time you try to pee and you're like, it's just butt back here and you can't. There's no fly to the unzip and. And then, then you just your pants are around your ankles at the urinal and then everything goes back. They're backwards, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, this is the final question. Okay. I feel like. First of, all, I, first of all, I think I let Matt down. I, I I will think of a better name, and I'll get back to Matt. But go on. Josh, what does it mean when a girl keeps kicking you in the leg? This is very dependent on age, because because if you're 35... No, this is dependent on a lot of things. No, no, no. No, it's, it's purely age. If you're 35 and a girl kicks you in the leg, it probably means like she's one second away from macing you in the face, and you should probably... <laughs> If you're if you're like seven and you're on a playground and a girl kicks you in the leg, like bro, you are getting to like second base, like over the shirt on that playground, like today. <laughs> uh, so like it's very dependent on like how old you are and the location. If you're in a dark alley, it doesn't matter what age you are, you don't want a girl to kick you in the leg because it means bad things are gonna happen. What if you don't have like street lady Legs. smarts, like like people like us, uh-huh. and she's like like you're th- we're at thirties and she's like kicking you in the leg like little taps. And then, like, you're, like, you get tired of it because it gets... Like, when you, well, keep it the, when you keep it, like, when you keep it in the same spot and like, it starts to get sore and get mad, she, like, keeps, like, giving little taps, like, at your attention. You're, like, stop fucking kicking me in the leg! And then it all goes downhill from there. Well, that's very different. Is it a kick? Like, is she, like, is she, like, trying to be, like, Beckham here? Or is it, like, a tap under a table? What if she it... bends your leg like Beckham from kicking it so hard? Then I would bend her like Beckham. You know what I'm saying? Like, over a table. On that note... That's the end of the episode. <laughs> really? That one? <laughs> so again, we want questions at cast at geek-pop.com. There's not spelled out dash. It's a hyphen or a dash, whatever the fuck that's called, because Josh is a dick. Josh, what else do you do on the internet? I do a podcast every week. It's about pro wrestling. You can find that at thegorillaposition.com. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, check that out. We like it. Do you have a Twitter? I have a Twitter. It's at GI underscore Josh. You can check that out as well. I also like to do some things on YouTube that don't get me copyright infringed, and those are called Let's Plays. So you can check that out at YouTube.com slash Tobes, T-O-B-E-S, plays. And you can follow me on Twitter at Girls Heart Geeks. Yay! Josh, I'm going to assume that you're going to have this up on iTunes because you're the man for that kind of thing. I am the man for that kind of thing. I'm glad that you are deferring to my expertise. Josh, when you like things on iTunes, what should you do? You should rate us. You should subscribe to us. Both of those things are very important to get us in charts and to really make us, you know, stick this podcast in Mark Maron's face. 
Yeah, fuck Mark Maron. The yeah. ETF, bitch! Yeah, we're, we're coming hard for Mark Maron. That's what that's what we're saying. Yeah, so like, I guess, is this is called like? Rate? Yeah, like, rate, subscribe, subscribe and rates. leave reviews and be yeah. like, these guys are so great. They help me with through my life problems, blah, 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 blah. And if you don't want to use iTunes to check us out, you can just follow our Tumblr, geek-pop.com. Word up. So this is at issue zero of Geek Pop Podcast. Once again, I'm Toby. And I'm Josh. Bye. Signing out. 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 Bye.